hello thank you for watching my channel today my name is Sarah and my channel is your tree shelf and today I'm doing a June TBR video I haven't done a TBR video for a long time because I don't generally speaking actually do um, TBRs for myself each month but I am I always say like at the beginning of the year I always say that I want to read more by whim and then I end up not reading by whim each month because I have like a different challenge to do or a readathon or just different things that I think um, stop me from reading by whim and this month I can actually completely read by whim and I always like watching people's TBRs I especially like watching Lauren from Lauren and the Books TBRs every month so I just thought I'm going to actually just pick a load of books off my shelves that I want to read this month and work my way through them and it felt like such a treat like just being able to pick what I wanted off my shelves and um, read them this month. So um, I've already read, it's actually like the, what date is it today? It's already the 5th, so I did this yesterday on the 4th, I actually picked the books. Um, I've already read this month um, an audio book, Haruki Murakami's What I Talk About When I Talk About Running, and um, Me Before You by Jojo Moyes, which was the book that I got from the um, book scavenger hunt. So I've already read those, and then I'm going to go through like my, the rest of my TBR for the month. So I'm just going to have another sip of tea. And I'll show you what I've got. So the first one that I picked, I have already started. And this is A Beautiful World, Where Are You? by Sally Rooney. So the reason that I really wanted to read this, I've had it for a while. It's in hardback. I'm not sure if it's out in paperback yet or not, actually. I don't think it is. Um, so I bought this when it came out. I have a mixed relationship with Sally Rooney. So for me, Conversations with Friends was a three star and normal people was a four star looking at my um goodreads but then i absolutely adored the tv adaptation of normal people like so so much and now i'm watching the tv adaptation of conversations with friends and i'm also really really enjoying it and i'm enjoying them a lot more than i enjoyed the book so i sort of felt number one now that I've kind of got her style a little bit more and I can picture her characters a bit more, would I actually really like the books more? Um, and I also really wanted to pick up this one. I've, I heard beforehand that the characters are slightly older in this book and that made me more hopeful as well. And so far, I absolutely really love this one. So this is by far my favourite. Um, the other night I read um about 80 pages in one hit while I was helping my husband do some work stuff and um I would have happily stayed up for the rest of the night finishing it I did not want to put it down and I'm really loving it so this is about um four people so there's um Alice who is a writer who's had um a breakdown quite recently there is Eileen who is um, working in the book industry in Dublin um, there's Simon, who is a mutual friend of both the girls. He's quite a um, um, sort of a, a good guy. Um, I don't know, he just seems to be like one of the good guys. And then there's Felix, who Alice meets on a Tinder date. And um, we don't really know too much about him yet. So it's focused on these four. I haven't reread the blurb because sometimes blurbs can tell you way too much and I don't want to know what's going to happen. But I love it. So what I'm kind of thinking of doing is doing a project where I reread Normal People and Conversations with Friends and then make a video about all three and whether I've changed my opinion. But that was a rather long... Um, I won't talk about all of them for this long. But yeah, so that's the Sally Rooney. I then decided, so I've got um, a spread in my bullet journal of my favourite booktubers' favourite books of last year and I only put the ones on it that I already own because I don't want to go and buy new books just for that challenge that I set myself. So I've picked some of the ones that were on that list as well. So one of them, this is a library book that I've had out for too long. This is Sweet Bean Paste by Dirian Sukagawa, um, which is a Japanese book which is translated by Alison Watts. And this is a book about a, a man called Sentaro. Um, so he's basically, um, 
he's an alcoholic. I think he's been in prison and his life is not going the way he expected it to go. And he makes these sort of Japanese sort of sweets, I think, um, which are filled with sweet bean paste um, in a shop. And then he meets this old lady who's really good at making them. And I think she sort of turns his life around. And this was a favourite book of Christiane Jones um, last year. And I got it out of the library and I haven't read it yet. Um, so that's the next one. One of Jean Menzies' favourite books from last year is this one. This is How to Lose This is How to Lose the Time War by Amal El Mota and Max Gladstone. I feel like there's no way to describe this without reading the blurb because I've heard that it is kind of confusing. So I'm just gonna read the blurb out to you. Um, so it says, Among the ashes of a dying world, an agent of the commandant finds a letter. It says, Burn before reading. Red and blue, two rival agents hell bent on securing the best possible future for their warring factions, strike up an unlikely correspondence. But what started as a taut a taunt, a battlefield boast, grows into something more, something epic and romantic, something that could change the past and the future. The discovery of their bond will mean their deaths. There's still a war going on and someone has to win that war. That's how wars work, right? So, yeah. Okay, written by two authors. Quite a small book. But um, that's like in their science fiction um, section of book shops. So I'm looking forward to giving that one a try. The next one was on Simon Savage's Books of the Year um, and this one is um, Rima and Alam's Leave the World Behind. Um, another reason that I want to read this is because it's being made into either a film or a television adaptation and I'm not sure if that's out yet or not. Um, but um, I'd quite like to read this beforehand as well. Um, so this is about, um, I believe, a couple, yeah, Amanda and Clay. Amanda and Clay have gone to stay in a remote holiday home and they're having a lovely holiday when this older couple turn up and say, um, this is actually our house and there's been like a massive power outage in New York and so we need to like come back to our house. And they don't know, like, are these actually the owners of the house or not? Like, what's actually going on in New York? We don't know. Um, so this is like a, a thriller and, um, again, quite a small book. These are actually all quite small. And, um, yeah, just sounds exciting and kind of a uh, varied... Um, genres of, of what I've picked um, then I have um, The Island of Missing Trees by Alif Shafak so this is on the Women's Prize shortlist this is the fifth of six books that I will have read once I've read this one the only one I haven't read yet apart from this is the Ruth Zeki and I'm not that fussed about reading that one I don't know why I'm just not so I, I think I'll only read that one if it wins but I do really want to read this one I bought this in hardback when it came out on the um the shortlist so this is about um a romance or I don't, is it a romance or a friendship or a love story um in 1974 in Cyprus between two teenagers one who's Greek and Christian one who's Turkish and Muslim and they meet in um, the shade of this um, of this tree, of this fig tree. And um, then I think some the civil a civil war breaks out. They're separated, and then decades later in London, there's a young girl who's trying to figure out her family past. And I'm guessing, obviously, these two guys are related to her family past. Um, I then did. Oh yeah, so the next one that I really want to read is Loveless by Alice Oseman. So this was one of my five star predictions books. So I did a video, a couple of videos ago, five star predictions, and I picked um, enough that I would read one each month for the rest of the year. And so this month I'm going to read Loveless by Alice Oseman. And this is a YA book about an asexual or aromantic character called Georgia and her um, journey through university as a person who she actually discovers herself is a romantic and uh, I really can't wait to read this because I loved Heartstopper so so much the TV adaptation I've started reading the graphic novels again love so far and um, I want to read everything Alice Oseman writes I think and so this is my next one I then did another um, book scavenger hunt with Faye, uh, my daughter, so she answered all the prompts for me with a little bit of help and we came up with um, this one, which is another kind of TBR vet for me. I've had this one for a really long time. I got it second hand for like a pound or something. Yeah, one pound. And it's in beautiful condition and the, the front cover is really gorgeous and 
you've got like a little cutout on the front cover. So this is the watchmaker of Filigree Street by Natasha Pilly. I believe after I looked on Goodreads, this is actually the first in a series. And I've got so many series on the go, that's a bit scary. But this is set in 1883 and we're following a chap called Faneuil Steepleton who finds a gold pocket watch on his pillow. And the watch saves his life from a blast that destroys Scotland Yard and he goes in search of its maker, Kita Mori, a kind, lonely Japanese immigrant. And meanwhile, Grace Caro is sneaking into an Oxford library, desperate to prove the existence of the lum luminiferous ether before her mother can force her to marry. And it's about how the lives of this, each um, each of them each of them comes into contact with each other. And then this might sound this kind of looks a bit ambitious, but I think we can do this TBR. Then we have um, one that I need to finish. So this one, How to Be a Victorian by Ruth God Goodman. I started reading this a couple of months ago and I was really enjoying it. I'm this far through, so that much through. Um, and I had to put it down, I think, because I needed to finish the book club book. And um, because of that, I just then got on board in other things and didn't finish it. So I think I'm going to read this alongside the others. Um, but I am really enjoying this one. Um, and this was one of Ruby Granger's favourite books of last year. That's kind of my main, that's my physical books I've got with me. I then have my book club book for next month for my work book club. And that is The Silent Daughter by Emma Christie, which I have ordered from the library. Um, so I believe it's about um, a woman who's competing in a, a running race and she goes missing after the race and or straight from the race. And her husband like rings the t her two grown up children to say like your mum's gone missing and one of them doesn't respond. I think that's the kind of the premise. Um, and I didn't want to read too much more than that on the blurb because with a thriller, I think the least that you know, the better going in. So that's the work one. And I did pick a couple on my Kindle, um, but they're just kind of if I have time ones. So reading this TBR out loud, it might seem a little bit ambitious to go for any more. But if I do, the ones that I'm going to focus on, that I got like, um, I got a pop socket for my kindle because everyone has pop sockets nowadays and um yeah i thought it was really cute and it matches my kindle really nicely um so i want to read hamlet by maggie o'farrell which was on multiple people's favorite books of the year last year and also what was the other one i wanted to read oh the fifth season by nk jemison another popular one on the favorites list last year but that's really big so i doubt i'll be able to read the N.K. Jemison book as well as all of the rest of the books. But anyhow, so that's my TBR for June, which I'm very much looking forward to. Um, if you have any thoughts on any of the books that I've mentioned, then let me know. Or if you have read any of them, plan on reading any of them, that would be cool. Um, it's just so nice to have a month where I have like no commitments and I can just read whatever the heck I want, really. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's it from me today. Um, like I say, upcoming plans. I've got to film my May wrap-up video, which will be next, because otherwise it's going to be too far into June. And then I'll try and do the Sally Rooney project, maybe in July, because I guess I can't read three Sally Rooney's as well as all of that list down there. So anyhow, I'll stop talking now. I will sign off. I hope you've had a lovely week and I will speak to you soon. Bye. <laughs>